Today is the 22nd Tuesday in Ordinary Time and also second day of the Mindanao Apostolic Congress of Mercy with the theme, Communion, Participation, and Mission of the New Evangelizers on Mercy. In today's Gospel, Jesus demonstrates the power of love as he speaks with full authority to fight against evil. The Lord's words have power to touch, transform, heal, and set free those who believe in him. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, let us ask the Lord for protection against evil. And let us be reminded that only God can do things possible. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know very well 
that it is always an extraordinary grace to be gathered around the table of the Lord, the table of His mercy and forgiveness. Therefore, the table of His love for us. Let us prepare then for this Holy Eucharist by once again recalling to mind our sins and again deeply mindful of His mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the Liturgy of the Word. But is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, what is there about his word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Brothers and sisters, 
if you take my position here and looking around, looking at you, looking at the priests on both sides, and looking at the three bishops with us this afternoon, it is an unknowing that you are not only from Davao, but you come from almost all local churches of Mindanao. And not only that, one of the bishops here, as you know, is the nat National Spiritual Director of the Divine Mercy Apostolate Philippines. And knowing that one of you represents the Visayas, the lady from the region Bacolod, and then one representing Luzon, one of you coming from, I think if my, I'm old, but I still remember very well, somebody from the parish of Las Piñas belonging to the Paranyake, representing Luzon. So this is really an extraordinary sight extraordinary assembly of God's people with a particular color, with a particular heartbeat, kumbaga, that we try our best, we nurture our faith by seeing this particular dimension of God's presence in our lives. And that is God's mercy and goodness for each one of us. So even if we are somehow closing now, allow me to welcome you. I was absent yesterday at the beginning because I think, I hope the word somehow spread around that I could not be around. I had an ordination yesterday and the ordination was in Samal. And in these days in Davao, some, many of you would know, there's a ferry that crosses back and forth from the mainland to the island. But these days, you have to, you have to spend hours in waiting for the ferry. So it was quite a trip yesterday. Uh, but as I said to myself, even if I was absent, I know that I'll be here with you this afternoon. I'm happy in particular that many, I did not expect this many priests. To, to come and attend. I'm happy that Bishop Abel, Bishop Abel of Mati is here. He is from Davao. And also so happy to see Bishop Ver of Dipolo. And as an aside, I don't know if you know this, but those from uh, Dupim, it, I pray, I hope that somebody from the polo a priest a missionary would someday be canonized a saint father paliola and bishop there is the one spearheading preparing all the documents all necessary things needed in order for the cause the causa or father paliola to be canonized that's from the polo huh? and of course bishop santos bishop stood not only the national spiritual director, but also my dear friend, though I look very much older, but we were contemporaries in Rome. And then also going back to Rome, he was asked to serve the Collegio Filipino in Rome. So we were quite, uh, and then he became a bishop. So even if he is from Bataan, we share some particular closeness and some jokes with Bishop Sud. Thank you for coming, Bishop Sud. Uh, now, we close the special assembly for Divine Mercy Apostolate Chapters of Mindanao. And again, thank you for coming together. It is just by looking at one another and listening to one another already that is a source of comfort and inspiration for all of us. Now, I know you've had good talks in the last, in these two days, but allow me to say a few things in this liturgy that we're having uh, this afternoon. I, I think you agree with me 
that the focus and the devotion to the divine mercy and the particular teachings around this devotion would bring us always, I think it's very healthy, to bring us always to the event that is represented by the whole devotion of divine mercy. And that event, when we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, is looking back because the actual event that is the phenomenon, the source of the, the actual happening that we can say, wow, this is divine mercy, is the Easter Tidum, the passion and death of Jesus. In fact, the painting, you can see, see it well, shows us in a very different way, but shows us the passion of Jesus. On Good Friday, three o'clock prayer, the death of Jesus. That's why the feast would bring us back with more appreciation to the passion and death of Jesus, the center event of our salvation. Therefore, I would like us to, for this Mass, uh, to consider that the divine mercy spirituality, the divine mercy apostolate, the whole devotion urges us to become closer, a profound appreciation and understanding of the event of God's passion, death, and resurrection. And that is very important because it is in that event, in the most wonderful way, beyond imagination, we saw and we continue to see the mercy and compassion of the Lord. And in particular, it is very healthy, I, I believe, that our devotion, our focus on the divine mercy will always be, among other things, will always be fed by the Holy Eucharist, which is the recalling, the memorial, the one that you said, do this in memory of me. Therefore, in a way, when we become active, sincere, committed members of this particular apostolate, divine mercy apostolate, we can, with confidence, say with Saint Paul in today's first reading, Kumbaga, these lectures, these prayer sessions, all this beautiful uh, mga, mga ginagmay, nga mga pagampu, all this would help us to proclaim like what Saint Paul says. But we have the mind of Christ. Again, the devotion will help us to become very close to Jesus, to see him quite close. And that is very possible when we frequent ourselves with, with sincere hearts to participate day in and day out, especially every Sunday in the Holy Eucharist. The Paschal mystery made present in our midst in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Now, two things can happen to us when we come, become close to Jesus and we come close to Jesus in the Eucharist. One, we become like him. I have said this quite a number of times in Davao. When, when we were, there's Monsignor Tony here, where is he? Maybe they side. When we were studying, well, Bishop Jimmy, uh, the one who was, who was there yesterday, uh, we were classmates. But during our time, there was no verb, Christify. We would never, we have never heard of the word Christified. But now in one of the songs we hear, Christify, or we are Christified. When we come to Mass, we are Christified. We have the mind of Christ. 
And therefore, my dear friends, if we become like him, we are crucified. The devotion does not remain external. Very boldly, we can say, we ourselves can become also mercy and compassion. We are crucified. But also, that's very personal, very personal. The other side is this. When we come to the Eucharist, this beautiful sacrament, we don't only think of ourselves, but we always think that the Eucharist is an invitation for many. So good palang, initial palang, ang mass would, ang misa would always put in our minds that we are a family, that we are many who are called by Jesus. Saints and sinners, all together called by Jesus. So, on the one hand, we are Christified. We become very close to Jesus, according to St. Paul. We have the mind of Jesus, but also we are called to become representations of Jesus to those around us. And therefore, ang usaka maayo nga, nga member sa apostolate will always be looking towards others, will be looking over the fence, kumbaga. Not only our group, that is very necessary, very helpful. We become saintly as it were. We are helped as it were. We are encouraged as it were to be Christified. But that would move us to go outside to those among us who need in the community who need to know Jesus more especially his mercy and compassion again I thank that we have you have this schedule this organization to uh, to meet as a region as a diocese and then national level and i heard asian level beautiful now now i would like to close something that i i came across last august 17 uh magbasa basa man ko sa mga church news and august 17 uh, barely two weeks uh, barely two weeks the article says As Pope, uh, he published his second encyclical. He published second encyclical. His, not encyclical, his desire to establish this feast. And this was very much publicized on August 17, many years ago in Poland when he publicly prayed for that church, for God's people to receive the mercy and forgiveness of the Lord. And it's very timely that when John Paul, now St. John Paul II said that, uh, the present Pope underlined all the more that this God, this Lord, that we wish to be close to us, this Lord who wished for us to be close to him, is really the Lord of mercy and compassion. And we are told by this present Pope, when it comes to our daily life, he said, Pope Francis, if you get tired, of struggling to be good if you are discouraged to be good and strong in your faith and you are tempted to give up Pope Francis says remember God will never give you up the Lord will never get tired of you so today 
in this Mass as we close our special gathering. It is a time for an occasion to renew our faith. Renew our faith in this good Lord and renew our faith in the grace of being present to one another, especially in the community of devotees of the Divine Mercy Apostolate. I would like to close by my personal testimony that I have told this yesterday that as a bishop in Davao, I am very happy of the presence of the Divine Mercy devotees, the Divine Mercy Apostolate. They don't keep to themselves, but ang tatak nila, ang ilang dating, if we use that word, they're always with us in the life of the parish, always showing the love for the Lord and the love for the church. And particularly, I know very well in, in silent ways that they pay attention to the needy and to those who need the mercy and goodness of the Lord. This present Pope, I believe, Pope Francis, is in presently using another word for mercy and compassion, I believe. And he says, the challenge today is to show to people the tenderness of God. I believe that's another translation of mercy and compassion the tenderness of God. Again, the challenge for us as we struggle to be faithful, committed, active members of the Divine Mercy Apostolate is to be really Christified. And being Christified, we become really in our life, deeds and words, mercy and compassion. In the end, showing to others the tenderness of the good Lord in our lives. Please stand. Our prayers are faithful. The gifts of faith is shown in our actions. True religion is sincere generous and merciful, may these intercessions we make for others strengthen the quality of faith in action. For every supplication, let our invocation be, through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For the Holy Church and her leaders, Pope Francis, bishops and priests, may their faith and belief in the gospel continue to hold them as beacons for the people of God and for the world. Let us pray. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For the leaders of the world, may they encourage those of faith by protecting the rights of all who believe and practice religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Through, Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For those who are burdened and suffering due to the pandemic and climate change, may they find support in the community around them and in just policies from their leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For the divine mercy apostolate, may we be good example of communion, participation, and mission as evangelizers of mercy amidst pandemic, especially to the needy. Let us pray to the Lord. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For all of us gathered here, 
May we share the beauty and joy of God's mercy for whatever we learned and heard in this second day of Congress as we depart May God guide us back to our respective homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. For our dearly departed, especially the members of the apostolate who have gone before us in this time of pandemic, may they inherit eternal life and the riches of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Through your divine mercy, bless your people, Lord. Most loving Father, hear the petitions of the people you have gathered at this altar to hear your word of wisdom and to be nourished by your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with us in humble praise as we acclaim. of all holiness make holy therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like that you fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Romolo, our Bishop, George, his auxiliary, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we make merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please Let stand. us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. seated and let us hear a word of thanks from our lay coordinator of the dice of the divine mercy apostolate mom joji ilagan bian good afternoon good afternoon everyone may i request the conference committee to also join me here please most your excellency most reverend romulo valles archdiocese of davao most Reverend Roberto Santos, Bishop of Balanga, Bataan, and Episcopal Director of the Divine Mercy Philippines. Most Reverend Se Severo Caemare, Bishop of Dipolog. Most Reverend Abel Apigo, Bishop of Mati. Our Spiritual Director in the Archdiocese of Davao, Reverend Father Arroyo. Our Philippine Divine Mercy Philippines National Director, Reverend Father Prospero Tenorio, Assistant National uh, Spiritual Director, Reverend Father Nap uh, Baltasar. Thank you very much in behalf of the Archdiocese of Davao and the 21 Archdioceses and Dioceses of Mindanao. We would like to thank Most Reverend Archbishop Valles for celebrating the Holy Eucharist of the Mass as a highlight and as a blessing for our Macomb 2022. Likewise, we would also like to thank um, our bishops, our spiritual directors, and all our beloved priests. We would also like to thank our lay coordinators from Daditama, Kambustan, Kidmako, Dopim, and uh, Zambazuli. Thank you very much to all our lay coordinators and our um, officers in each archdiocese and dioceses of Mindanao. Please give our um, 
Most Reverend Archbishop Valles and our bishops and our beloved spiritual directors, a big round of applause. Daghang salamat sa inyong tanan. Thank you very much for without your inspiration and without your support, we, the Divine Mercy Apostolates all over Mindanao, would not have bravely and courageously um, organize the MACOM 2022. Thank you very much. We pray that each and every one will have safe travels. May the Lord, may the Lord of mercy, His unfathomable mercy, protect and bless each and every one of you as you travel home. Until we meet again. Madayao na Davao. God bless and good afternoon. Please stand. I would like to request my brother Bishop to join me in blessing you as we conclude this holy sacrifice of the Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This holy Eucharist is ended. Let us go convinced and confident of the mercy and compassion of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.